Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science in everyday living. Mr. Wizard? Oh, hi, Alan. Come on in. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi. What's that? What's what? Oh. Excuse me, I didn't recognize you with these things on. <laughs> well, that's a uh, special little aquarium that I have put together. Uh, because today you and I are going hunting. Hunting? Uh, yeah, have you ever been on a big game hunt? No. Well, neither have I. Uh, but <laughs> I've been on many small game hunts. Little small? game, well, it's the opposite of big game, little game. Yeah. Little game hunts. And that's what you and I are going to do today. In fact, here, if you'll put these, uh, these on, and put it on, just to hold it in front of your eyes, it's not adjusted, and look up there, you'll see the sort of animals that we're going to be looking for. See them? Uh -huh. There's a tadpole. Yes, a tadpole. And there's all kinds of other animals in there that you maybe won't recognize because you probably have never seen them before in your entire life. And yet, they're almost literally right under your nose. All you have to do is go hunting for them and you'll find them. Wow. There's a snail. Yes, there's a snail. And a very special kind of snail. I'll, I'll tell you about him later. There's a whole bunch of stuff there's in there. There's all kinds of things in there, yes. Are you, something. It's very easy for you to, to be able to make this kind of a, a collection of wild animals yourself and observe them and sort of start your own, uh, your own aquarium, uh, kind of like a zoo. Yeah. Because in an aquarium, you ordinarily think of as f fish, don't you? Mm -hmm. But these are not fish. These are uh, most of them insects and some uh, snails and things. Okay, well, let me show you how you go about now trying to get uh, the, these kind of animals. Uh, first of all, let, let's see, well, here, put this back on again and see how many you recognize. Let's take a close look at it and I'll sort of help move it around. Uh, and here's a, here's a pointer. Uh, you see that one right there? Yeah, that's a tadpole. That's a tadpole. Okay. Now, uh, how about this one over here? Uh, that's a snail. Yeah, but look at that thing on the back there. You see what that? Yeah, what is that? Well, those are snail eggs. And they're encased in a little uh, sort of uh, bag of jelly. And each one of the little dots that you can see there is going to be a little snail someday. Oh. Now, how about this snail up here? See that one? Yeah. There's something growing on it. Yes. Uh, a plant is growing right on the back end of the snail. I think it's a plant. I haven't got out the microscope to check these, so I'm not sure when you use just a magnifier whether there's a plant or animals. They could be an animal that are attached there yeah. and are getting food as the snail moves along and pulls its way through the water the water currents could carry food to the animal's back. So unless you have a magnifying glass, you probably uh, won't be able to figure out what it is. Now let's see what else we can, let's see. Here, right over here in the center, you see that? Oh, that's an ugly looking thing. Yes, isn't that an ugly looking thing? Notice it has a, a three-pronged tail sticking up? Yeah. Have you ever seen an animal with three-pronged tail? Uh, no, I haven't. Well, there, there he is sitting right there, and we'll, we'll find out more about him later. And he is an amazing animal. You will, uh, he's, he, they're my favorites. Let's see what else we can find. There's a lot of them in there. Yes, there's, no, there's one up here in the top. You can just barely see the back end of them over here. Yeah. Hey, by the way, notice the, notice the uh, frog. See the little feet in the back end there? Yeah, it's just beginning yeah. to grow. Yeah, I'll put my hand around the other side. You can see it right there. You see, there's a, just a little foot coming out. Yeah, as, he'll as, become a frog someday. Yes, he'll become a frog someday. Well, anyway, these are, the, uh, these are some of the animals, and there are some in there that you haven't seen yet because they're hidden. Hidden? They're hidden, yes. But let's uh, now see how you can make this kind of collection. I said it was very easy and, and uh, to make this kind of collection. So here's what you do. Come on around over here. I'll show you how you, you go about making your own aquarium. First of all, you go down to California Lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right down at the end of the road. You know where that yes. is. Yes. In fact, you, if you didn't go to California Lake, you'd go to almost any pond in the United States where there uh, are green things growing. And here's what I did. I went, just dipped this quart, uh, quart jar down into the water and got a bunch of stuff. Most people would call it what? Uh, weeds. And weeds and muck and junk, right? Yeah. <laughs> stuff that nobody else would possibly want. No. Well, oh, I see. Oh, my gosh, look what I see. Hold still, don't move. Wow! Look at it. I don't know. First time I've ever seen one that big. I think... That, that's, that's, that's a it. tadpole. No, it isn't a tadpole. Let's hang on to him, and I'll show you later what I think he is. Looks like a 
it's going to frog. <laughs> well, it isn't. They'll put a little water in there so he, so he'll... Uh, Keep a lot. See? Right there, right in front of your very eyes. You catch something. How do you like that? Okay, let's put him down over here, and I'll put him in a thing later, and you'll see. Anyway, as I started to say before I ran across <laughs> that animal, what you do is you go down into the pond and dip out a, you know, a bunch of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But then it's pretty hard to see in there, you know, because it's all packed tight. Yeah. So then you get a big container, something like this, and a transparent one so that you can put a white paper on the bottom and maybe shine a light on the top. And you, you add some water to it and kind of let it settle, and it all spreads out, and then you can look around like this find and, and find these animals. And literally there will be millions of animals in here. Some of them so small that you will never be able to see them, but uh, a good share of them big enough so that you should be able to reach in and, and uh, get them out. Uh-huh. Now... It's hard to believe over a million. Well, you'll see why I say that later, that there's over a million in here. I didn't count them, but I think they are. <laughs> Now, sometimes you'll find big ones like tadpoles, but most of the animals are going to be a little too small for you to see with your eyes, so that you have to lay in some equipment yes. in order to, to get them. And here's the sort of equipment that you will need. Oh, by the way, after you, after you uh, get this tank over here, it would be a good idea to find a flat-sided bottle that's not too thick to put, the material, to put the stuff in, and you'll see why later, okay? All right. There's... Magnifying yeah, glass. one of your most important pieces of equipment right there. Magnifying glass. Now, the only trouble with this one is that uh, you have to hold it with your hand. Yeah. So that means one hand is always tied up while you're, you, you, you're, you're working with the other one. So one way, to, one way to solve that is to get one like this with a little spring on the back, see? That's the kind of jewelers. Yes. Here, would you try it on? I think that's a universal size. You try it on once and see if that won't work. All right. Aha! There. You look like von Stronheim, that's what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the German general? Yeah. Okay, now uh, focus, it, focus it on something. Put your finger in front of your eye and see where, where you have to get. Right about there, it's focused. Yeah, now how far away is that about? Open your other eye and look. Well, you can't, you're too no. close. <laughs> about two inches. Two inches? Yes, in order to find out how, how, how much something magnifies, you divide the focal length which you really should do by taking the sun and focusing it down on something, and taking that distance, the focal length, two inches in this case, and dividing it into ten. Because uh -huh. uh, scientists who work with that figure that, that the closest you can see something nice and clear is about ten inches. So yes. if you now bring it to within two inches, it means you've magnified it five times. Oh, I see. See, it's five yes. times as big as you bring it close. So therefore, you can see why, why you need a thin bottle. So that you can... Right. If it's too thick, if it's too thick, if it's a bottle why well, obviously you would, you know, you wouldn't be able to yeah. see the stuff in the middle, and uh, you use a flat. So therefore, you want a relatively thin bottle like this, so that you can see through it, and also one with flat sides, so you have as much as little distortion as mm -hmm. possible. And you, there are better containers too that you can find. Anything with nice, flat, smooth sides. Well, now what if you wear glasses? Well, that creates a problem. Well, here, give me that thing. I'll show you. You can use these. And you can put them right over the glass, like that. That doesn't work too good. Well, it's not too good. There are other kinds of magnifiers, you see, which you can put right over the, the frame of the glasses, like this. See? <laughs> and now when you look through that, you get the same effect. This one has a little magnifier on the top, and you can flip it down in position and get very close, about ten times. Oh. Yeah, see, so that... So this is pretty good, but you, you find yourself squinting one eye all the time, and that gets kind of bothersome and tiresome after a while. Yeah. So, do you remember that uh, magnifier I gave you when you came in? Now, can you, if you can put that on, see there's an adjustment back here. You adjust it for your head, because from now on you're going to look through that. Okay. Now, try putting it on and see how that is. Ah. Now, you see what you got? You have magnify, you have, it, it magnifies um, for both eyes. Yeah. So that you don't like have... Like a pair of glasses. It's, it's just like a pair of glasses, except this magnifies about ten times. Uh-huh. So therefore, you will not have to squint your eyes. You'll be able to see things uh, with both eyes and, in, of course, in three dimensions. Yes. You know, just like you do. So that you'll be able to see kind of around things and see what is behind what and so forth. Okay, so you, get, you remember, these are going to be yours, and every time you want to see something in close-up while you look, you look with these. All right. Okay, well, now, now you see the animals, now you have to catch them. Yeah. Yeah. Nets and things like that. Well, if you see something and it's very big like that thing I just saw, you could have used a tea strainer 
with uh, two things cut off. That's a good net. Okay. Yes. And sometimes if they're way, way down near the bottom, you have to have a tongs. And here's a photographic tongs that you can use to grab things and a whole leaf and pull yeah. it out, see? So a, a nice long tong. Um, where's the one I used to, to catch the animal? Over there. Here. Your, a shorter tongs is very helpful, too, with a little point so that you can, you can grab them. Grab that's, it. that's helpful. Uh, a, little, a little tiny measuring spoon works very well as a little trap. Once you see them, you can trap them against the side of the glass with a measuring spoon and gradually and get them gradually up to the top. Them so up. that's something else again. But some of them are so small, you can suck them right up with eye drop. Oh, I'm sorry, medicine droppers. Yes. <laughs> I always say eye droppers, and yeah. I, uh, my wife is complaining. Anyway, uh, here's a great big long one, see, so that you can reach way down into the bottom of the container. It's and, way down and the bottom. See, it's way down, so that, that's a good one. And then, this is a handy kind of gadget to have, too. And that's a, a wax pencil, because if you find an animal and they're sitting still, you can mark it on the side of the glass like that, and then you can always come and find them again, or reach down when you're trying to get at them. See? Yes. So that's a helpful thing, too. And then later on, perhaps you want to get to, to a, a magnifier that magnifies maybe 20, 30, and 40 times. Uh, you're going to have trouble with it. And certainly you'll want to be able to collect specimens and put them in some kind of a small container for study. And that's, of course, what I did with this huge animal. Oh, put them into a little Petri dish like that. He's a big one, isn't he? Isn't he? Yeah. And finally, maybe you'll want to look at some of them with a microscope. But today, we're not going to look at any with a microscope. All the things we are going to look at today, you're going to be able to see with a high-powered magnifying glass. Uh, that double one, that uh -huh. this one over here. Okay, let's go back and take some things. Take your All magnifying right. glass with you. I'll take my uh, glasses with my special uh, thing on it. And let's take a closer look at these animals that, that we have before. You got a step there? Yeah. I'll put one up for you so you can see it. And I've got a whole bunch of them in special kind of cages, which we'll look at later. Now, let's see. Let's take, first of all, these um, dragons. Or not the, uh, oh, I almost told you what it was. Uh -oh. Some dragons coming up. Yeah. Down, right down here in this corner. The snail. Now, I'll move it like this. See, I've got a control on it so I can move it around so that you, you'll know where I'm looking at now. See the snails down there? Mm-hmm. There's the one with the uh, There's eggs. the one with the eggs on it, yes. Now, let's see if we can watch them for a while. Oh, there goes the tadpole. <laughs> Out of the way, tadpole. That's it. Thank you. Um, we'll see if we can watch one for a while and see if we can't watch the snail so it'll turn so its mouth will be against the side so we can see it. A tadpole. Now, the snails are probably uh, one of the most successful of animals that you'll find there. Almost any handful of Weeds that you pick up is going to have a couple of, oh, there we are, a couple of hundred of them. Now, see the foot of the snail? Yeah. Now, watch as it walks along. See the mouth up on top? Yeah. yeah. That looks funny. Doesn't it, though? As the snail, as the snail moves along, its mouth opens and closes like that in order to scrape off the algae that lives on the plants. In this case, he thinks the algae lives on the side of my aquarium. <laughs> so he's uh, trying to scrape it off there. But ordinarily, they do, they do this on leaves and stalks of plants. And this is one of the reasons why they're often in regular fish aquariums, because they clean the aquarium. See his two long antennas sticking out? Yeah. Those are really eye stalks. Eye stalks? Yeah, he has, he has light-sensitive uh, organs on the end of them. See his foot? That's that long thing. It's called a, a foot. Oh. And and he's, he lays a, uh, puts down a layer of mucus as he walks along. And that uh, helps him slide over the, uh, the leaves. Does he uh, use the algae for food? Yes, that's what he eats for food. That's why they're so good. Now, his eggs on the, the eggs on the back there, I uh, looked at them under the microscope one time, and you can see right through them. They're transparent, and the little, the little snails inside are transparent, too so that you see right through them, and when you put them under high power, you can even see the little heartbeats right inside the egg. And they go round and round and round, just like a big snail, but they're, they're completely transparent. So you'll have a lot of fun, I'm sure, uh, watching snails, because they're very interesting. Let's uh, see about that old tadpole over here. Yeah. He's, he's uh, really moving around. around. Now, let's see if we can get him to quiet down for a minute. There he is over here. Mm. The, tad, the reason I wanted you to take a close look at the tadpole is that you can get a good idea about his little feet. There. See, see he's beginning to breathe now up in the front there with... Uh, he, remember, he starts out by breathing with gills. Yes. And then he later on 
breathes with uh, lungs. with lungs. And uh, this is the only one I was able to catch. They're very wiggly and hard to follow, too. Yes. But there, you can see his little feet, see him? Uh-huh. They're just They're beginning. I, I caught him about a week ago, and there was hardly anything sticking out there at all. And just in the week, you've been able to see his feet form. Where'd he go again? Oh, there he is there on the bottom. There he is on the bottom. Now, hold still. Notice his tail has a sort of thin membrane all along yeah. the back. Is that to help him swim? I, I think so. I'm not, sh I'm not, I don't do much about frogs. I spent most of my time following insects. And I'll have to study frogs one of these days, too. Now let's, um, let's go over, see if I can show you another animal. Uh, right over in there. Hard, to, now, you probably can't notice it, but in there is an animal. There is? Yeah. Hard to find. See now, because sometimes the animals blend right in with the with the. Um, let's see if I can find one. There's one. See it? Yeah. See it walking along there, sort of sneaking up on something. Uh huh. What does it look like? It's hard to tell. Like a grasshopper, maybe. Something like that. Do grasshoppers live underwater? No, they don't. No. What? Oh, there's another one. Oh, there's that. One we don't want the thing that he comes along. Yeah. One we don't want him. Why there? But there's a there's a uh, a good view of that animal that I'd like you to uh, to be acquainted with. He's they're one of my favorites. You've never seen him before. A there you can get a good view. Oh come on, tadpole. Now take a look at that animal and see see if we can identify him now. Notice he has two uh, stalks sticking out in front like yeah. antenna. Right there you can see him sticking out. Then he has two big bulbous eyes that, on each side of his head. How many legs? Uh, well, at least you can count those on this side. Let's see, one, two, three. Three on this side, and yeah, there are probably three on the yeah, other. Yeah, huh? yeah. You, ever, you don't find many animals that have five legs, do you? No. No. Well, so what do you suspect that he might be? Uh, uh, what kind of an animal? What class? An insect. Yes, an insect. No, 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 he has a sort of striped body and then a three-pronged tail. Yeah. Hey, there's another one up there, see? Here you can see his tail better. Well, there's a lot of them I there. think, I, yes, I caught quite a few and put them in there. Let's go back with that one again. Yeah, we'll come back. <laughs> now, there you can see his three-pronged tail, see? Uh-huh. So if you, uh, I'll show you later how you can, how you can find these kind of animals uh, in, in the book so that you'll uh, be able to um, recognize them, them and identify them because this is a damselfly nymph. Now, does that mean anything to you? A damselfly nymph. Is it related to the dragonfly? That's right. It's related to the dragonfly. But you know, if when you go out in the summer and you, and you row along in a boat, and you see the, the dragonflies, they're the ones with the two wings yeah. on each side, and they have a long, skinny body. Uh-huh. Well, have you ever seen a, a rather a smaller one that looks something like it, but the wings are folded up like this, and has a long, green body, and sometimes with a, a long a body that curls up a little bit? Uh, I that, think so. That's a damselfly. That happens to be a... The green darner, I think it's called. And there are lots of other kinds. But they're very similar to the dragonflies, but their wings usually fold up this way. And that's what we're looking at, is the underwater uh, um, stage of the, of the damselfly. Well, now that you've found, I'm going to find a better one up here. There, there are two of them yeah. right up there. One of them has lost his tail. But there's a pretty good one right there. What does he use the tail for? Well, that tail, see, see if I can find the tail now. The tail is full of veins, and the veins are used uh, to uh, breathe with. Hey, I just discovered something down here. Hold a minute. Hold a minute. Down here, right above the snail, I found something. See it there? Right on the other... Oop, it's gone. Right on the other side of the... There you they flew over in this corner. They're hard to keep track of these. Yeah. One. There he goes. See it? One that just went zooming by just on the side. Yeah. See you there? What does that look like? Oop, gone. Uh, there you go. <laughs> they jump around like fleas. Yeah. yeah. See, it looks like a little shrimp. And that's what it is. It's a little a shrimp. shrimp. Yes, in fresh water, there are all kinds of freshwater shrimps. And when you get a bunch of uh, pond uh, water like this, you'll uh, find that you'll find lots of... Now, I'm going to go back up here and take one quick look at that. that uh... Oh, he went and moved. 
Anyway, now let's see if I can show you how you will uh, have to try to identify these animals. Uh, you would look at them just as we did the damselflies up there. Uh, look to see how many legs it's got and how many, how much head, you know, what its head configuration is like, the body and so forth. And then, then you have to somehow, oh, there is a good, oh good shot of his tail, see that? There, you can see how it's all bridged with a sort of network, you see it? Uh-huh. If I stand in front of it like this, you get a nice white background so that you should experiment when you look at animals, whether you get a white background or a dark background, sometimes you can see parts much better. There's my shirt in the background, you see, and you can see it nice and yeah. white. And when I move away, you see, you see a different, you see his color better. So you want to experiment with uh, lights too when, as you look at it. Anyway, you notice that there's a three-pronged tail like that. And so therefore, then you'd have to go someplace and then attempt to find out. And where, where would you go? Ask somebody or what? Well, I find, try to go to the library. Go to the library, that's on. one way. But, if you, but it's hard to, to, to go to the library and get the book before you go sometimes because you don't know what, exactly what you're going to run into. So the best thing to do is to have some kind of a guidebook. And I have sort of made a collection of it because I've had fun going out and collecting these things, and I want to show them to you. Come on over here. And I want, uh, if you uh, have some fun going out hunting for these animals and looking at them like this, the, the book that you should probably have, that's probably the best one, is this one right here. It's a very thin book. You can just stick it in a coat pocket or in your knapsack if you're going out for longer. Yeah. See, Guide to the Study of Freshwater, Freshwater Biology. Biology. Needham and Needham. It is a very famous work in the field and is really a, nothing more than a book of, of illustrations of the various kind of animals and plants that you're going to find when you look in freshwater ponds. And it is nothing but a key. In other words, here are some, see, it'll just give you pictures and it'll describe them over here to give you the name of the animal. Yes. That's all. Now, see that? Something is that the one like that we looked at? No, I don't think so. No, you wouldn't think so because the tail was too long, isn't it? And, and it and didn't have such big things up there. Mm. Well, this is a mayfly nymph, so when I look them up, I can tell you, see, that it's not that. Uh -huh. How about those? No. What does it say? Dragonfly, Dragonfly nymph. nymph. Remember, because I caught some of those and you should be able to recognize them when you see them. There's some more dragonfly nymphs. Uh -huh. See, the bodies are much heavier yes. than, the, than the damselfly. Some more dragonfly. 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 Aha, damselfly. damselfly. See that one? Right down here? That's it. Uh, doesn't that look like it? It has a yeah. three-pronged tail, has the veins in the tail, has a long, thin body, little wings, which perhaps you didn't notice, and six legs. It only shows three there. And well, anyway, that's, that's the idea that you can, that you can hear are different kinds of uh, homes for various worms and bugs. Here are beetle yeah. larvae. Uh, Anyway, all you're doing is getting the name of it, you see here. Yes. It doesn't tell you too much about it. So that you, after you take that book along with you in the field, and then, for instance, here's a whole book on nothing but dragon and damselflies. And it's a book that tells you all about them, how they live, you know, their uh, whatnot, and uh, something about their life. Uh, here, for instance, is the damselfly, see? Yes. The one I told you about with the wings and like that. Uh -huh. So that you could later on go to the library and get a whole book like this. Then later on, you might, this is a whole book of nothing but insects, and it is another guidebook, you see, and it tells you all the various kinds of insects. But then after you, for just reading at home, for, for instance, to find out something about what you might expect, here's a book that is in Moreland story form, in which it gives you a background of all the various animals that you'll find, how to collect them, and uh, eat plants, and so that when you recognize, when you recognize them in the field, by the name, you can remember that what you've read about them and, you know, maybe know how to catch them better. Mm -hmm. then, more about them. Yeah, and then here is a book that really is, a, is the definitive one. This is a book that really lists practically every kind of animal that does not have a backbone that lives in the water. And I've used it, uh, oh, to, uh, to great effect because here are decapods, the, yeah. the little shrimp that we saw. And, uh, oh, it goes on and on, gives you all kinds of information about them, their whole life cycle that's and where they live. Book. And that's a good book, and that's the kind you'd have to get at the library. Uh -huh. Okay, well, let's go back and see if we can find some more now. And uh, let's take a look at that animal I discovered. And I think you'll see now why, why when I discovered it, I was anxious to get it. Here, you want to get your magnifier ready? Because I'll, I'll put him in a, in a special little tank. Oh, I don't. And we'll take a look at him. I've never, I've never found one like this before, but I have an idea as to which one it is. Now, get your uh, glasses on, you all set? Take a look at them right there. Look at that huge wow. animal. You know, that's a dragonfly nymph. It is? Yes, a very big... Oh, look, there's a damselfly right next to him. See him right on his yeah, nose? Yeah, uh-huh. 
careful, he may eat them. These damselflies and dragonfly nymphs are terrible eaters. They grab and bite and tear apart anything they, they think they can eat. Oh boy. And they eat all the time because they have to go through many stages. Look at that. Doesn't that look like a great big rhinoceros? Yeah. Look at this. I'll bet you that's going to end up to be his darning needle. You know, the kind of, the, the, the kind of dragonfly they call a darning needle? Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway, there we are. We caught him right there. That's an ugly thing. Isn't it, though? Well, let's take a look now at some of the other, other animals that I captured and see if you can uh, identify them. Well, let's see, what if... Oh, see if I can find one of these because he's, he's one of my favorites. Uh, right over here, you look over on that one over there. You see there's a little animal walking along the side of the container? Now, let's see. He's a, there he is, see him? With a pointed little head, a, little, a, a worm. Here, let me point to him. He's right there. See him? Uh-huh. That little animal is a flatworm. And it's a very famous animal in science because scientists have done lots of experiments on them because they can cut them in half and each half will grow into a new flatworm. They can it even will? cut them down the middle halfway and it'll grow two heads. <laughs> and they've done all kinds of experiments on them to find out something about uh, how uh, tissue is regenerated and how cells form. Well, there's one. Now, let's see if I can go over here and... There's oh, another one. Where? Right oh, I see. Yeah, he's on the back side over there uh -huh. now. Uh-huh. Yeah. They are there. flat. Aren't they flat, though? And they're kind of cute because they have cute little cross eyes. Yeah. See them? Can you see the little eyes there? The little they're eye spots? They're not, they're not really eyes. They're just eye spots. See, there he goes. He's, now watch how thin he is. Look. Wow. He almost disappears. He's, he's, he's swimming along the side of the container and you can't even see him. Look how flat. See? Yeah. That's why he called the flatworm, of course. Well, let's see. Let me, uh, let me put up some of the other animals. Notice that these are special kind of containers that are very flat in which you can put, um, in which you can put animals and they, do, they can't swim away. Take a look at this one and see if you can recognize him from the pictures that you saw. Now, this is a bigger container, but you see that? What do you think it is? I think that's another dragonfly. That's fly. right, another dragonfly nymph. Two of them, as a matter of fact. See his eyes? Different kind than that's the a different other kind, one. that's right. See if I move out of the way, you get a different picture of him. Anyway, have a lot of fun going out in the, in the woods and collecting these kind of animals and uh, starting your own homemade pond. Thank mm -hmm. you.